GGC Requiem, and we are back with the fifth and final match of this league with Obs on Traverse. Three and one. Definitely made a couple mistakes. Feel like we had a good chance at being at 4 0 coming into this. Um, but alas, what can you do? Uh, this seems like a pretty good hand. Um, anytime you have the hand with. Uh, sorry, turn one hand disruption into turn two Tarmogoyf, you're okay. We are on the mulligan, or on the, wow, I am getting tired. We are on the draw, so opponent could just turn one thought sees us, and that might be that, but kind of looks like Dark Slick Shores, so what, are we playing like fairies? We got a fairies opponent? I think since we have two baubles, I'm kind of willing to just find out by bobbling one of them on them. That was a mistake. I actually should have played the bobble first to look at my own land. Uh, my own library. Thopter Foundry. Okay, so we're probably playing a um, essentially like a black blue um, Tezzeret style deck. So knowing they have Thopter Foundry coming in, I think we're just going to go ahead and Thought sees our opponent here. And Snaring Bridge is almost certainly what we have to take. Hmm, that's really frustrating. Pentad Prism. So we kind of want to take the Fatal Push. But in Snaring Bridge, they only have two mana. They're not going to draw another mana here. The question is whether or not we're willing to... See, and even if we get an Abrupt K and they have the Welding Jar down, that Tarmogoyf can't necessarily do it. I think we just have to take the Ensnaring Bridge. We basically just lose otherwise. So the other thought that's going through my mind is we can bobble ourselves as well. That gives us one, two, three draws coming into our next turn. Hope to get another hand disruption to attack the ensnaring bridge. They're getting a second Thopter Foundry. It's not going to do a whole lot. I think we just have to take the ensnaring bridge. I really, part of me just wants to to try and race the opponent here. So assuming one of these thought, okay, the pentad prism, that's fine. So some sort of Grixis version they've got going on. And what are they going to draw? Dark Steel Citadel. So an extra Tarmogoyf. So now we're not feeling so bad about running out the first Tarmogoy. Tarmogoyf to its death. So the opponent's going to draw the Dark Steel Citadel. So they're actually going to use a counter off their Pentad Prism to take care of the Tarmogoyf now versus waiting until next turn. I think their hope was. Yeah, so they're going to throw out a Thon Thopter Foundry. They're down to one card.
So this question now is do we go Lingering Souls this turn, Tarmogoyf, Lingering Souls next turn? Or sit that I think we just gotta get the Tarmogoyf down now, which means do we want Treetop Village on the battlefield over Blooming Marsh? I think we do. So the opponent does have some artifacts they can sacrifice. Once they take the Pentad Prism, use the counter off the Pentad Prism, that'll be an easy uh, artifact to sack. Spellbomb's pretty good here. So now we're going to probably hold off on casting the Lingering Souls until we can cast it and immediately cast it again so that they can't heal spell bomb it away, which means we're just going to play the Blooming Marsh sideways here. And we're going to go ahead and activate Treetop and try and get in for as much damage as we can this turn. Wouldn't be surprised if the opponent spell bombs and draws a card right here just to knock the damage from the Tarmogoyf from, uh, from 5 to 2. So instead of taking 8 damage, the opponent's only going to take 5 damage. And if they draw like a uh, Fatal Push, then they could actually even just... Well, I guess they had to use the Pentai Prism to draw. So the big thing is we're really hoping they don't draw into a ensnaring bridge. We only have a couple answers to that. We can Inquisition, but I feel like it's either an instant that they can cast on us at real speed or real time speed. Or it is a land. So I feel like we probably just want to, we really just need to fire off Lingering Souls. Get a sorcery in the graveyard. Attack for with Tarmogoy for four, and then we'll recast Lingering Souls, possibly. I mean, it's possible they have like a damnation. I just can't imagine that they would have not used it then. So, I don't want to go get that Lingering Souls right now. Let's think about this. If we make them start sacrificing artifacts for Thopter, yeah, so we, we're we definitely not clocking them, I guess. Treetop Village puts extra power on the battlefield. So Damnation is a potential concern, but I think what we really need to do is start getting them to a point where they have to start sacrificing their artifacts. Um, probably gonna start with Pentad Prism. They're gonna do Thopter Foundry. So I think what we want to do is, I think we do just want to get this Lingering Souls out there and really start to make them trade off their Thopters with their artifacts and then just hope to put as much pressure on them as quickly as possible. We can cast the Inquisition next turn to get the Tarmogroyf back up to a bigger size and then have the Treetop Village for Trample. Again, Damnation would be problematic, but we do have treetop village and access to paths to kind of thwart the blocker potential. Okay, 
back to this cage, that's fine. So I think we just Inquisition here. I know our opponent doesn't have anything. Activate Treetop Village, go to attacks. We are presenting lethal. They're gonna have to make some tokens. We could path one of their creatures after they make the tokens. We'll have to see what they do here. So we're presenting seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 points of damage. Each Thopter they create is going to give them one life and a potential blocker. So they sacrifice the cage there. biggest thing we can hope for is that they throw all of their thafters in front of the treetop village. And I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see them crack this on the welding jar and the dark steel citadel. So right now they still need to block at least one creature. I feel like that's maybe the most optimal scenario. Let's see, they could sacrifice two more creatures. Or let's see, I sacrifice token and artifact, create a 1 1 blue thopter artifact creature. So they could sacrifice this as well, so they create three more next turn. I think we actually want to path one of the thopters here. Uh, it does thin their deck a little bit, but it just gives us a little more damage output next turn which might just be enough to to win the game I want to hit another land so that plays into our favor um, So they can create three tokens, but the four blocks, we will um, remove one of them. And that should be lethal. Oh no, I guess they're gonna gain the life off of them again. All right, so that's four, so it chumps the Tarmogoyf. It's probably gonna tap the Citadel for that mana. So that's enough for it to stay alive. So by pathing this Thopter now, they have to do it one more time. Sacrificing the Thopter Foundry, or else we have lethal. I guess they could sacrifice the Thopter for a Thopter. That leaves them at one life. Yep. And then ideally we're in a position here where Treetop Village And just win the game even if they drew, drew like their best draw which is probably damnation
And the opponent drew a land, so that is game. They're going to make us play it out here. So we're going to be on the draw post board. Lots and lots of artifacts. Few spells. Searchable Extraction seems good, and Snaring Bridge is a real problematic card. We're happy to hear of that. Kataki seems great. Uh, Flame Tendril seems fine. Reclamation Sage, great. Maelstrom Pulse, great. Liliana is probably pretty good. Um, I don't think anything else here we want. I think we'd prefer Fatal Push to Path to Exile, and we don't need all of those. Um, I do think Liliana, the Last Hope, is still good. Kalidus is probably unnecessary. I don't think we're going to be running into enough creatures where Kalidus really matters. Collective Brutality could be okay, except I just don't see them having a lot of instants or sorceries. As we saw, they had a lot of artifacts. They're going to have some instants and sorceries, but it's not a great card, and so I think it's um, worth cutting here. I don't think we need all the Fatal Push. We probably hold two in or pull two out. What's that look like? Couple of Fatal Push, Couple of Rope Decay, Maelstrom Pulse, Reclamation Sage, plus the Lilies as removal, Flaying, Tendrils. Still want all the Hand Disruption here. Um, scavenging Ooze might not be that great. It's possible something here is better than Scavenging Ooze. Maybe the Kalidus is just better than Scavenging Ooze. The opponent's not playing many creatures. Yeah, let's... Let's maybe do that. And the assumption the opponent's not playing many creatures. Sometimes it's worth having the uh, collective brutalities for reach as well. We may look at on the play bringing those back in over maybe the fatal pushes. Um. I really like the Surgical Extraction, but we have no way to attack their permanence. We're not going to turn on Traverse for like a Reclamation Sage or Kataki very well, very early. Um, probably assume, assuming our Tarmogoyf just dies. But we are on the draw. And we have good mana, good mix. Our opponent's not putting much of a clock on us. I think, I think we keep this. Um, and then just hope to kind of set up a good Katak or a good traverse later. And yet again, we just kind of luck sack here. Ideally, we're going to get a um, ensnaring bridge, maybe a Thopter Foundry, rip all that. Tezzeret's not too bad either. Definitely one of the win cons that they have. But I think here we're just going. What's Tezzeret do? Look at the top five cards. You may reveal an artifact card from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. So next, so we take the Fatal Push. They Pentad Prism next turn for two mana. We play Tarmogoyf. They play Tezzeret. Maybe down tick their Pentad Prism, turning it into a 5-5. Five, five. At that point, Tarmogoyf cannot get through it. Taking their Pentad Prism doesn't do a whole lot. Huh. I 
think we're going to take the uh, Tezzerat here. We're just going to we're just going to extract it. So looking at our opponent's hand, Word of Invention, help them find some artifacts. Doesn't look like they're running any. Um, it's only two ensnaring bridge. Definitely the sort of the meat combo. Relics. Well, you know, I didn't consider taking Fatal Push and surgically extracting Fatal Push. That could have been all right. Something to consider for future reference. So I'm assuming they're going to run out that pen pentad prism. The one positive here is that Fatal Push killing the Tarmogoyf is going to put Delirium online. And we drew another Tarmogoyf anyway. Again, sometimes it's just better to be lucky than good. So now we're going to be able to potentially start, um, again, traversing for like Kataki or Reclamation Sage. Trying to play a little slower tonight. Cost me in one of the matches, but just trying to make sure we're making the right plays. That's the focus. Alright, so opponent has one card in hand. We're just going to do this. We're going for it. So at their upkeep, they have to pay one mana or sacrifice their... For each artifactor, they have to sacrifice it. So I could see them using the Pentad Prism mana to create a... 1-1 one, one flyer with the Thafter Foundry. Nope, just going to pay for it. Yep, then to create a Thafter token, that's fine. And then the plan will be to probably, well I guess we have Bajooka Bog. Sort of the Meek. Okay, so we're going to be able to... Hmm... Unfortunately, we can't. I don't believe we can bajuka bog them here. We can traverse into a reclamation sage. So this is kind of kind of an infinite combo, but the Kataki is going to make it like very hard for them to try and do what they're trying to do. So we definitely want to destroy the Thopter Foundry with the Reclamation Sage and not the Sword of the Meek. I 
And then again, they have to pay a mana for each of these thopters every turn. And for the sword, they're not going to be able to do all of these things. So what's going to end up happening here if they try to keep sacrificing the sword, in the end they'll have to end up sacrificing all their thopters, but I think they're just going to try and... Yeah, see they didn't end up doing that. They're just trying to buy themselves some time. Which is somewhat problematic for them, knowing that we have a Reclamation Sage. So the flip side, if we blow up the Sword of the Meek here, I think we can actually Bajuka Bog it away. All right, if we blow it up, they sacrifice it, goes to the graveyard in response. Yeah, so we definitely have to target the Thopter Foundry. 